Hello Internet people! In this video I'll show you how to add AMP in WordPress with the plugin and how to set the settings for the best performance. After this video you will have super lightweight Google accelerated mobile pages that Google will store on their servers so they will be extremely fast to load. And at the end I'll show you a browser plugin that will help you with spotting any errors with your AMP pages. And now Arnie will explain how AMP works. You've been accelerated. Tape sweat punch. I just want to mention, if you're still not sure why you need AMP, what it is and what are the benefits, check out the video that will appear on your screen's top right corner now. I'll explain in detail the pros and cons of AMP. All right, let's install AMP on your WordPress. So I'm here in my dashboard. Let's navigate to plugins and add new. And in the search box, type in AMP for WP. And it's this, this plugin. It's awesome. Just install it. And don't forget to activate it. Oh, really? Here you can choose how to set up this. I would just choose the easy one. Let's do that. Here you select website type. You can change it to something else than blog. Maybe it's an e-commerce you have or local business, but mine is blog, so I'm going to keep it. Then you choose where you want to actually have AMP. I suggest that you only have for posts and leave the page and homepage uh, without it. AMP works best when it's just text and images. There's nothing fancy going on. That's usually your posts. And then you can also adjust the design. First, you can choose the logo here. And they actually suggest the logo size here. I don't think mine is the correct size, but, and you should actually upload an image that fits this correctly. Otherwise later you will feel like this. Disappointed! And then you can select the color for the whole scheme. So mine is kind of blue. I'm gonna go with this one. You can readjust it later. Then if you have your analytics tracking, you can add it here. And it's simple. If you have analytics open, you just come here and you go to Cogwheel, just click on it. It's here at the bottom. It's the admin area. And then here under tracking info, you have your tracking code. And this is where you have also your UA tracking ID. Just copy it and place it in, in here. And then you can add what kind of analytics type it is. In my case, it's Google Analytics. So I would choose that and then click add. Actually, this UA code is not from, from this website. So I'm not going to do it now, but just wanted to show you how to do it. And then you got your privacy settings. So here you can actually choose which one you want to choose. So cookie notice bar or GDPR. Honestly, I don't know why you only can choose one, but let's say I'm going to go with cookie bar. And I have, if you have one, just check this one. Arnie, how do the cookie bars work? Talk to the hand. And on this page, you can set up ads if you want. I'm going to leave that to another video. So if you are interested, just check out the link in the description. And then when you click on the easy setup view, you go back and here third party compatibility. So this section is if you have other plugins already installed so that they work together nicely. So for example, if you have Yoast, you can add it. It will then grab some of the elements from Yoast. Also, if you have PWA or structured data, you can use these. You need to check this if you have those plugins. For me, I don't have them, so I'm going to skip them. Now you might be wondering, what can you do now? So now actually you have to go to your website. So this is not actually AMP, but what you can do is just adjust the URL and add AMP at the end. 
Pop quiz for you, Arnie. What does A and P stand for? Fuck you. Huh, that's a bit hurtful. All right, and this is how your website looks like. It looks a bit weird because you need to actually have the mobile view because A and P is only for mobile devices. So let me adjust that. And you can do that by right clicking anywhere on your site and choosing inspect element. And here at the top, you should see this icon of devices. Just click on that. And now you just need to wait for Google to index the AMP pages, which usually happens either in the, within the few days or it might take a bit longer if your website is new. As you can see, it's super important that you actually put the right sized logo. Otherwise you end up with something like this. Looks pretty ugly actually, but the website is now fully in AMP and basically you're able to adjust these things. So for example, if you don't want these, you can also remove them. So let's take a look at the menu and you can see it's completely empty. And actually I can't even get out of here unless I refresh the page. This is because you actually need to go back to WordPress and then under appearance and menus. So here, for example, I have my primary menu, which is on my normal site, and I need to check also AMP menu. This way it will be applied to both. Don't forget to save the menu. And then if you go to your website and refresh the page, don't forget to be on the AMP website. So once you're there, click on menu and you can see I have now everything that I had in my normal website as well. So now if I click on about, it will actually go to a normal web page. So it's not AMP anymore because that's how we set it up. We don't want it to be AMP on about us pages or pages in general, just the posts. Oh yeah, and there's also this cool plugin for Chrome where basically it's a AMP validator. That's how it's actually called. And when you are on a normal page without the AMP, you can click on it. And if it has AMP, then you'll get blue like you saw just now. Now it'll redirect you to the AMP page. And it's green if it's everything is okay. So for example, this page, everything is fine. But then I have a page here where actually there's two issues. Let's see what they are. So if you click into it, click on it, it will open up and it will tell you what's wrong. So for example here, it's saying that I have something wrong in the CSS. So I have some custom things that shouldn't be there. And also I'm missing some source set in the, for an image. So it's pretty cool because this way you can actually debug what the issues are. Usually they're super easy to fix something like you need to add a little star, uh, a tag or attribute to your code. But well, that's about it. It's usually fairly simple fixes. My name is Robert and if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about how to improve your website, get more traffic and other website related stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe Ding button dong. so you don't miss out on anything. Here are two videos that I think you should watch next. Whoosh!